Hello and welcome. My name is David. I'm the CEO and founder of SmartCos. And in this video, we are going to explain to you how SmartCos became what it is today, a very successful, fast growing company in the food industry. Our motto is food security as a service, and we design, build, own and operate smart farms. The official start of SmartCos was in early 2020. However, the real start, including the research and development years, was way earlier than that. Before SmartCos, we were doing European Union projects. Um, these were all uh, revolving around renewable energy, smart cities, blockchain, drones, robotics, artificial intelligence. In total, we have done 43 projects over the course of approximately eight years. Uh, in recent years, we have started working with the same people and eventually those people became the team. And uh, after the last project, I basically proposed to them that, hey, what if we stop working for others and we created our own company? And essentially, that's how SmartCast came into being. At first, SmartCast, um, well, the name didn't exist and we wanted to create the perfect real estate. The idea was to create such a building that had its own energy and water supply. It was as carbon neutral as possible and really imagine drones cleaning the windows, robotic parking and all kinds of crazy stuff around energy and water management. We soon realized that this is a little bit of a capitalistic idea and also at the same time realized that the conditions are perfect to put anything into such a building where you can manage energy, so light, water, CO2 and airflow perfectly. Under such conditions we also then realized that plants could be grown such sophisticated infrastructures so we shifted our focus towards agricultural research and development. After a while we have created the first demo farm and smart costs was alive. Thanks to these projects, I have built a huge network for myself. I got to know politicians, diplomats, sheikhs, princes from the Middle East and just overall very influential and well-connected people. We have worked with uh, huge international institutions, companies, governments all over Europe, over in the US, China, Russia, Africa and so on. The team that we managed to put together in the end was well over 100 people. We have specialists at moment's notice that we can just call should we need some someone that is an expert in water treatment, in energy management, in robotics, AI, and so on and so forth. Our team has become so sophisticated that, for example, our commercial director has 37 years of experience, 20 of which he was the manager at one of the largest supermarket chains in Europe. Besides building this impressive and sophisticated team, we also hired high-level engineers from all over the world. We have people from Fortune 500 companies, as well as diplomatic institutions who are helping us grow SmartCast into, well, what it is today and what it will be tomorrow. At the end of 2019, just as the world was learning about the COVID-19 pandemic, we came closer and closer to the official registration and launch of SmartCast. As a 2020 turned around the corner, we were traveling a lot. I went from Spain to Russia to Thailand, back to the Netherlands, and essentially, all of a sudden, the doors just closed. There was nowhere to go, we couldn't fly anymore, we heard the news, there was panic. Well, what better way to start a new company, a new venture, than in the middle of the uh, largest pandemic that we've ever faced? The official registration date was in May 2020 and um, right away we registered for a competition organized by the Spanish government called Innovation Against the Virus. Obviously this was aimed at uh, healthcare companies, medication, but there were also segments around food safety and security because as we all know, as the pandemic came around, everybody stormed supermarkets and started stockpiling food and therefore the organizers thought it was a very good idea to also have a food agriculture and rural category. SmartCast managed to win every single category in the competition. We became best innovative SME, best rural company and overall best startup. We received these awards from the Spanish government and also became part of a Amazon tutor program in May. And the world started noticing SmartCast already in the first month of its inception. Besides looking for investors, we were also looking for the so-called smart money, as cliche as it sounds. We wanted to find the joint venture partner who can help us expand, grow and mature as a company, but at the same time ensure that we have the right financial backing. 
Simultaneously, while we were looking for a potential equity and joint venture partner, we were also touring, especially the Netherlands and Germany, looking for technical partners, subcontractors, technology suppliers and engineers to help us uh, scale the company further and build those projects that we've committed to. During this period, we visited nearly every single greenhouse builder or other smart agricultural technology company in Westland. If you don't know what it is, it's basically the Silicon Valley for agriculture in the Netherlands. It's located next to The Hague. This place is really magical. Just if you look at the Netherlands as a whole, around 12-13% of the entire flat surface of the Netherlands is greenhouses, as, as in built-up greenhouses. Most of this is located here in Westland. We had many great ideas, many solutions, innovations, patents, but we needed these partners to make these technologies a reality. We needed those partners who had decades and decades of experience who can put it together. Imagine every single morning getting into the car, driving over from Amsterdam to Westland and visiting yet another greenhouse builder or yet another technology or solution provider and explaining to them what exactly we want to do. SmartCast is not only new in its innovation, but it's also new and unorthodox in its business model. In this industry, you're either a technology provider or you're a farmer, essentially a, an operator. You, you have a greenhouse or you have a vertical farm. SmartCast is sort of both, but neither at the same time. Our business philosophy is that we design, build, own and operate smart farms. Not only that, but these smart farms provide food security as a service. Predominantly our customers are governments, regions and international supermarket chains as a whole. This meant that we had to essentially explain this new world order uh, within smart agriculture to these very traditional and very deeply rooted experts who have been doing this. Imagine that your dad, your grandpa, your great grandpa has been doing the exact same thing for decades and decades and then comes along a non-Dutch guy who doesn't have agricultural background and explains to you what the future of agriculture will look like. Sometimes we were met with some laughter and some skepticism, but uh, those who trusted and believed in us are still with us and we will definitely continue building uh, SmartCast together with them. It's not only the Dutch agricultural powerhouse that helped us pave the way for SmartCast. It was also international, for example, Asian companies that helped us a lot. One of these companies was Huawei and uh, to this day we have done multiple events together with them, uh, mostly centered around the Green Deal, uh, Horizon 2020 and green development, uh, especially within the food industry in Europe. We have a really good relationship with them and uh, together with the Brussels Times and Pub Affairs Brussels, we've done um, large events, um, the latest of which was actually already this year, which was the Green Week uh, of the European Union. Just after the summer, in September, we have done a expo together with Expodronica. Here the idea was to showcase how artificial intelligence, robotics and drones can shape uh, the way agriculture is thought of today and how we can prevent waste, spillage and the use of pesticides in even open field agriculture. After a very dynamic and fast-paced summer, all of a sudden our arch nemesis was back. Covid was on the table again and the gates of international travel have closed. Between the period of October 2020 and January 2021, uh, travel became impossible, at least from and to the Netherlands, and the era of Zoom calls has begun. It was during this period when I last came back from Dubai, 5th of October, um, that we started essentially looking for strong financial partners, among others financial advisors, who could help us identify that one good partner who could become our equity partner, because up until this point we have not sold a single percentage of equity and we have worked purely on project financing and debt structures. We spent months and months talking to potential candidates from the US all over to China. We essentially spoke with the largest banks, VCs, family offices, high net worth and ultra high net worth individuals. What we just could, couldn't identify that one partner who would be it, who would really be that smart money element who could bring not only money, but a huge added benefit and value to the table and who would also have the right network to help us further scale smart costs.
Then the new year rolled around. While still in the pandemic, but with it came a couple of extremely positive developments for us. I've been nominated for Forbes Turn the Under 30, shortlisted, and was invited to participate in this very prestigious competition. I remember I was actually driving home from my dentist when I received an email saying that I've been actually awarded Forbes Turn the Under 30, and for 2021, I'm one of those fortunate 30 young innovative entrepreneurs who have been awarded this prestigious award. When I saw the email, I actually couldn't believe it. Uh, I, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. I called my fiance, I called my mom. I was shaking essentially from, from, from happiness and from excitement. And basically we got the award as SmartCast. It's not just my achievement, it's not just my award, it's for the entire team of SmartCast. After the award, we started receiving requests from media. This was uh, from television, from newspapers, magazines, blogs, radio, mostly from Europe, uh, Western and, and Central Eastern Europe. And then through one large article published by Index in Hungary, I started receiving some major attention in Hungary, which is where I'm originally from. While dealing with the snowball effect of the Forbes Award, we actually finished structuring the bond and issued it at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. This uh, was a green bond for 25 million euros with the objective of financing uh, highly sophisticated plant factories and vertical farms for uh, European projects. These European projects are now in construction and they are developing pretty well. The success of the Green Bond, as well as the news around Forbes and the immediate media attention, is a stark contrast to uh, Q4 of 2020, when we were essentially living on Zoom, talking to people all day, all night. This was such a sudden and, and immediate uh, attention and success that uh, to this day I find it really hard to deal with it. Sometimes when I walk around and people recognize me or want to talk to me or want to take a selfie with me, it's a feeling that I never thought I would experience and certainly not at the age of 30. Having such a structured product has enabled us to talk to institutional and uh, very high level investors in a different way. Now we had something to present to them without the fear of losing equity or diluting our own company's resources, essentially. This green bond has also allowed us to approach a different kind of well, project structure, where the projects themselves are financed uh, through different entities, SPVs, special purpose vehicles they're called, and these SPVs then have their own balance sheet and we could build these European projects completely separately from the main company. So we're not only unorthodox in the way that we deal with technology and the corporate structure, but also unorthodox in terms of fundraising as a young, uh, barely two-year-old company. The next massive milestone in the story of SmartCast was moving into our beautiful new headquarters. Uh, this one is located at Fokker Park. Fokker Logistics Park is right next to Schiphol, which is the airport of Amsterdam. And this park is the largest airport bound uh, business park in entire Europe. We have here a beautiful large warehouse uh, where we are the first occupants. This warehouse is very well isolated, it's uh, sustainable, modern. We're building over 2,000 solar panels on the roof. The entire system will be solar powered and the water system that we're installing will be a water positive system. When fully completed, this will be a 6,000 square meter, 10 layer indoor vertical farm, which will be the world's largest fully automated indoor farm. We have now a large European portfolio of projects, uh, including, of course, Amsterdam, London, a project in southern Germany, and we have an exceptional project, which is not in Europe, and that's in southeast of Brazil, in the state of Minas Gerais, where the local government, the regional and the federal governments have been extremely helpful and they have given us uh, land well over 70 hectares, where we will be building an extremely large, sophisticated greenhouse complex. 
The project that we're building in London uh, is going to be one of the largest uh, indoor strawberry farms. We are focusing exclusively on strawberries and even within strawberries we are focusing on a special variety, but more on that later. For the German project we are actually collaborating with the government of Bavaria. Uh, this is both on a local, regional and federal level. And here the plan is to build a massive facility over several hectares, which will not only be production but also our R&D, uh, working together with local universities and also uh, seed provider and crop physiology companies. Besides building production facilities and having the world's largest fully automated indoor farm in Amsterdam, we also have an R&D lab on the first floor where we are currently recruiting an artificial intelligence and robotics team. More on that later, we're going to make a separate video about that, so make sure that you like and subscribe and stay tuned for, for that. So what's the moral of the story? Well, stay true to the mission despite the challenges life throws at you. We didn't raise equity. We raised funds through structured bonds. We grew faster during the pandemic than any other young company and we used these obstacles to our advantage. We didn't preemptively decide on who our competitors and enemies are. Instead, we sought partnerships, friends and help everywhere. Last but not least, even though it sounds cheesy, we truly believe that if you work hard enough, anything is possible. And we didn't do it in the pursuit of money, we did it to make access to food and water a basic human right. Now that you heard our story, we're curious about yours. Uh, how was the pandemic for you? What were your biggest obstacles during the past two years and how did you overcome them? Make sure that you like, subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comments. There was champagne, right? Actually, no. Actually, that, that's the that's the point. That that's actually a good point. That we 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 never really celebrated anything. I love that text. I love that text. I'm gonna say that word for word because I'm tired. <laughs> this can be the blooper <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> well, stay through to the mission, no matter what life throws at you. <clears throat> Like, here's a banana. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, guys.